In this question, we're given a circle. The circle has center at a minus 2, and its radius is r. So we don't entirely know the center fully, and we certainly don't know the radius. We're told that two points r and s lie on the circle, and that the midpoint of these two points is m, and that there's a line which passes through the center of the circle and the point m, such that the line itself intersects the circle at two points a and b. And our task is to actually find the points A and B. So let's see how we could do this. As always, a good place to start is actually with a diagram. Uh, so the first question is, how on earth do we draw this circle? Because we don't entirely know where it is. Well, what we can say is the Y coordinate for the center is at minus 2. So it's going to be at y equals minus 2. And because we don't know the a, it could be floating on this line. OK, now for the purposes of this question, I have had to place the center somewhere so that uh, we can at least begin to do some mathematics uh, and hopefully make progress. OK, so uh, I don't know the radius of the circle, so I actually don't know if it's going to cross the y axis or not. All right. But anyway, so this diagram is certainly not uh, accurate entirely, and it's certainly not to scale. It's really just serving as, as a means of giving us intuition for being able to solve this problem. So onwards uh, and upwards. So what we're going to now do is place all the other information that we have here on our diagram so we can start to do some calculations. So we see that our point R is uh, sort of two three so it's going to be sort of slightly to the right and a bit high and then s is 10 1 so it's going to be more to the right and, and slightly not as high and m is the midpoint of r and s so we have that there and the line l passes through the center of the circle and m so we have l here and obviously l is crossing our circle at two points a and b and that's what we need to figure out so what's our approach going to be in solving this, this problem? Well, we're going to have to figure out the equation of the line L, and we're going to have to figure out the equation of the circle. And once we have those two equations, we can solve them simultaneously to figure out solutions, which are going to be uh, giving us the exact coordinates for points A and B. OK, so it's probably easier to start with trying to find the equation of line L. So what are we going to need? Well. Before we go straight into figuring out the equation of L, we need to make sure that we've extracted all the information from this diagram that we actually can. And even though we've put all the information that we're given here, there is still more information that we can, we can bring to bear here. And that is circle theorems. So from circle theorems, we know that if a line or a line segment is basically passing from the center and intersecting a chord, then that line or line segment is basically going to be a perpendicular bisector of the chord. OK, so in other words, RS and L are going to meet at 90 degrees and L is going to perfectly split RS uh, into two equal parts. And I mean, we, but we can also uh, deduce that directly from the question in this case, because we're told M is the midpoint. L passes through M, so it, it has to bisect uh, R, and, R and S. OK, right. So. How are we going to figure out the equation of line L? We're going to find the gradient of the segment RS. And we know that that has to be, that segment is perpendicular to L. We're going to use that to figure out the gradient of L. And then we're going to use the fact that M lies on L to figure out the equation of L. In other words, to find the y-intercept of L. OK, so let's, let's make progress towards that goal. So we can write down the gradient of RS, which is basically the change in Y over change in X. So change in Y is Y2 minus Y1, which is 1 minus 3, which is what I have here, and X2 minus X1, which is 10 minus 2, which is what I have here. That simplifies to give me minus 2 over 8, which is essentially a quarter. And so this is the gradient of uh, the segment RS. We don't want that. We want the gradient of the line L, which is perpendicular to RS, which means we flip this and put a negative in front, which will give us 4. So that's the gradient of L, which means the equation of L has to be y equals 4x plus c, where c is yet to be determined. But we know that m lies on L, and we can figure out the actual coordinate of m, because m is a midpoint, and so there's a midpoint formula, which we've seen now in multiple videos. So I will just uh, tell you how to calculate this directly. So we go to the x-coordinate of r and the x-coordinate of s. We add them up. We get 12. 
we divide by 2, that gives us this. And likewise, we repeat that for the y coordinates. So we go to y coordinate of r, which is 3, y coordinate of s, which is 1, add them up, we get 4, halve it, we get 2. So we've found our m. We substitute this into the equation 4x plus c. Uh, obviously, x equals 6, so we replace our x with 6, and y equals 2, so we replace our y with 2. And this gives us uh, a linear equation which we solve to figure out c. c turns out to be negative 22, which means we have found the equation of our line L. Now we need to find the equation of our circle c. But to do that, we need essentially two things. We need a center and we need the radius. Okay, We do not know the radius and we do not know the center. So we're going to figure out the center first. And how are we going to do that? Well, we are going to focus our attention on the triangle RMC. Okay, So we know that this triangle is a right angle triangle. And we explicitly have the coordinates for R and M. And only the coordinate for C uh, is basically partly unknown, okay? And what we can do is we can basically apply Pythagoras' theorem to this right angle triangle to figure out what A is going to be. So to apply Pythagoras' theorem, I'm going to need to figure out the lengths of the three sides of the triangle so we can do that one at a time. We will use the standard distance between two points formula, which you should be familiar with, and we've used that in many videos uh, up until now. So I'm just going to run through that rather than writing the formula down, which is you figure out the change in uh, x, square it, and you figure out the change in y, square it, and square root it. So x2 minus x1 is 6 minus 2. I square that. y2 minus y1 is 2 minus 3. I square all of that, and then I take the square root of that obviously having summed uh, the two quantities I figured out. So that would give me uh, the distance or the length Rm. I repeat that for the points uh, M and C. I'm, I'm using C as my x2, y2 and M as my x1, y1. So change in x is A minus 6. So I've got that squared there plus change in y is minus 2 minus or minus 2 take away 2, which is what I have here squared. So we've got this distance, and we do the same thing for the final uh, side, hypotenuse, where I'm using C as my x2, y2, and R as my x1, y1. I would leave you to check the details on this one. It's literally the same formula applied for the third time. Well, we now uh, turn to Pythagoras, and what does Pythagoras actually tells us? Pythagoras tells us that if I take my longest side, my hypotenuse, whatever that length is, in our case, it's going to be a minus 2 squared plus minus 5 squared, all square rooted, which is what I have here. So I take my longest side, right? And when I square the length, which is what I have here, that has to be equal to one of my shorter sides, okay, and in this case, uh, 6 minus 2 is going to be 4, so that's what I have here, and then 2 minus 3 is going to be minus 1, which is what I have here. So Pythagoras tells us we're going to have this side length squared, so that's my side length, I've squared it, the summed with the side length of the other shorter side, which is what I have here, in other words, the same thing as this, uh, squared, okay, so now what we have to do is solve this equation uh, to figure out A. Now this looks horrible, but it's not that bad because all of these square roots are going to cancel with these squares in each one of these terms, okay? Which means what we're going to end up with, it's going to be this expression here or this equation here rather, all right? So the 25 here is coming from the negative 5 squared. The 17 is coming from the 1 squared or the negative 1 squared plus the 4 squared. And the 16 is coming from the negative 4 squared. And lastly, lastly, the a minus 2 squared on the left and the a minus 6 squared on the right are coming from the a minus 2 squared here and the a minus 6 uh, squared here. So we just have to solve this. Uh, and at worst, it's a quadratic. It turns out it's not even going to be that bad. So let's see. So we expand this uh, double bracket, standard expansion. So the first term is going to be a squared. The cross term is going to be 2 times a times by negative 2, which is going to be negative 4a. The final term is going to be negative 2 squared, which is going to give me 4. The 25 just sort of is as is. And the 17 on the right-hand side and the 16 are going to combine to give me 33. 
The a minus 6 expands rather nicely. Uh, again, the first term is a squared. The second term, or the cross term rather, is going to be 2 times a times by negative 6, which is negative 12a. And then the final constant term in this case is going to be negative 6 squared, which is 36. So we tidy this up because the a on the left and right hand side are just going to cancel, right? And we can simplify further because the 4 plus 25 gives me the 29 and the 33 plus 36 give me 69. And uh, the minus 12a can be taken to the left hand side and the 29 can be taken to the right hand side. So when I take the negative 12a to the left hand side, I get 12a minus 4a, which is 8a. And when I take the 29 to the right hand side, I get 69 minus 29, which is 40. OK, and then we just get A to be 5. So in other words, we've figured out what our center C is. It's the point 5 minus 2. And so all we need to do now to write down the equation of the circle is to actually figure out what the radius is. But hey, presto, we know what the radius is because the triangle from which we got this equation by doing Pythagoras on actually had the point C and R already on it. OK, and C is the center of the circle and r was one of the points on the circumference of the circle. So in other words, the hypotenuse of that triangle was actually telling us the radius of that circle, right? And we know this expression on the left-hand side here is the hypotenuse squared, isn't it? So we want to figure out the radius. So we figure out the hypotenuse, which, which is take the square root of this object here. So that's what I've got here, but I know what a is now. a is 5. So I'm going to stick 5 in there. 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to have 9 plus 25. So my radius is root 34, which means my equation of the circle is going to be this, right? The center is at 5 and minus 2 and the radius is uh, root 34. So we're in a position to solve uh, the equation of the circle and the line simultaneously. So I'm going to substitute the equation of the line into the description of the equation of the circle. This thing here is just the same because this thing here is just written in a slightly simpler version. So when we stick in the linear equation into the equation of the circle, we replace that y with 4x minus 22, and the minus 22 plus 2 is going to give me minus 20. And so we have to solve this, which is necessarily going to give us a quadratic, right? Uh, but actually, we can make life easier by noticing something. If we factorize out a 4 from 4x and a 4 from minus 20, we will get this thing here. So 4 on the outside and x minus 5 on the inside. And that really helps us because we have an x minus 5 already. OK, and since that square is going to apply to everything on the inside, we are going to end up with x minus 5 squared and 16 lots of x minus 5 squared on the left hand side, which means we can combine this with this. So I've got one of something and I've got 16 of something, which means I have got 17 of that thing. And the right hand side is unchanged. but now. We see that when we divide both sides by 17, 17 goes into 34 twice. So we actually get this, which is nice and easy. We take the square root of this, which gives us root 2 with a plus and minus, And we take that negative 5 to the right hand side to actually get 5 uh, plus or minus root 2. So we've figured out our x positions of a and b. And so we substitute this into the equation of the line, y equals 4x minus 22. So we literally replace x by 5 x plus or minus root 2. I'm doing the calculations for both points uh, in one step, essentially. Uh, so we expand this out, and the 4 times 5 is going to give me the 20. The 4 times plus or minus root 2 is going to give me plus or minus 4 root 2. And then the 20 minus the 22 is going to give me minus 2. So in other words, we know that when I go with a plus solution for the x, I'm going to end up with a plus solution for the y which means when x is 5 plus root 2, y has to be minus 2 plus 4 root 2. So that's my solution for one point. And for the other one, when I go for the negative solution for the x, I get the negative solution for the y, and which is what I have here. And if you go back and look at the diagram that we started with, a was the point which was higher up and b was the point which was lower. So I can deduce that from the y values of these points. Okay, So I know that I'm labeling my points the right way around. So in other words, we have solved the problem that we set out to solve. Uh, we found the two points A and B. As I end this video, uh, I wanted to uh, bring a remark to your attention, which is our calculation for finding uh, the A, which is the x-coordinate of our center of the circle, 
uh, actually involved Pythagoras, and some people may have found it slightly slightly involved. There's a much more elegant argument which I've put up on the screen here. Okay, so I will leave you with this, and uh, if you like what we do, then consider subscribing.